court, which I think has to be a Jaws nod, just a little Jaws reference. Or maybe it's, uh, you know, Ronnie hanging out and he, <laughs> it's a, like a, you know what I mean? It's his, it's him. It's a younger him catching a fish. In my office, as I'm sitting right now, you can't see me because we're not doing visual, but behind me is a picture of myself and my father and I'm holding the biggest rockfish I've ever caught in my life. And that was back in 97. So, you know, people hold on to their youth and fish, apparently. I think the person in this picture has a darker complexion than Ronnie Cox has. Could be the uh, can't lighting. quite make it out. But it's could a black image, so it could be. Could be. Yeah, he's in the shade. Way, it's a huge fish. It's a huge fish. Uh, it looks like a group, a large grouper. Yes. It's just, just, it looks like a, it's, a, it's a fish the size of a person. Hey, uh, real quick. when what, day did, what month and day did this movie come out? July 28th, 1999. So I lied. The picture, ready for this? The picture was taken in 1999. Wow. And it was, it was June 23rd. How oh. wild would it have been if it was the date of the release of the film? It would have been perfect, but it's not. So Nick, thank you for that waste of time. I mean, I, <laughs> just cut this part out. No, <laughs> no. I mean, I love it. Like, I think you love the, you love fishing. You like getting out there. Everyone remembers the biggest fish they've caught. So it makes sense to have that up in, a, in an office where you're trying to portray, I don't know, strength, I guess, trying to portray that. You with a giant fish. Yeah, had I ever caught a fish, I'd have a picture of it. Power yeah. move. I got, a, Power. I got a picture of a crab that I caught. Ooh. There you go. What? There you go. Nice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, we're happy to hear that. I'm not giving a sarcastic comment about it. I, I bet that crab was and, a and great I catch. It. it was, uh, it was, you know, it's a happy, happy time. And I threw it back. And the fool may have killed it, by the way. I caught it. So good. So any more anything else in this office before we, we leave for the plane? His his lamp, he's got a uh a Triforce on there. Is that any like outside of uh High Rule and Legend of Zelda, is there like a uh like a high I don't want to say secretive organization, but could it be like a Masons thing? Could it be, you know, anything like that, or am I just looking for stuff? Well, we know that. So Sam Jackson in this movie, he said he wanted to play the character as a big game hunter, a, a diver, like just a, he's gone on safari. So maybe he is part of an organization. I mean, if you think about the what the traveler, like in the early 1900s, all the people who went around the world just kind of adventuring and dying horribly sometimes. You know, maybe he's part of this sort of crew that does that. So a lamp could totally play a part in that. Yeah, that's well, it, if, I'm, if not you just touch the, lamp, the lamp, but the, the design way. on the lamp. Oh, the design. Oh, yeah, maybe. Why not? Maybe if you, yeah. if you push the the center of one of the panels, like a secret door opens, or it sends a, it sends a call to the other members of the Brotherhood. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. The phantoms running around trying to get them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Billy Zane in the background when yeah. the helicopters fl- <laughs> when the helicopters flying away. <laughs> Uh, Billy Zane. <laughs> That's part of Titanic. Just missed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ooh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I do want to say, I do think the, the plane ride to Aquatica kind of does some weird things in regards to McAllister's character. Because there's two moments in this where she goes, she's like, I read that article about you in the Himalayas. And he's like, well, the Alps. And then... It's just that thing, the thing in the Himalayas, the thing where he almost died. And she got it wrong. And then she's like, you saved all those people. And then Sam Jackson's like, not all. And then she's like, yeah, you you paid for Aquatica. I think your dime. I don't know. So it, it, is she being kind of blasé? Like uh, not having all the data on purpose to kind of take a, a shot at him because you know sometimes people do that. Oh, cool, you do that. Wow, she got a bunch of things wrong right off the bat, or just kind of played it cool. Do you think that was a, a conscious decision? Yeah, she's she's trying to throw him off. I like yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm with Jay. She's throwing him off. She knows all of this information. She knows who's funding it. She knows all of that stuff. This is her project. This is her baby. She wants to make sure she has all of her bases covered. So if anything happens, there's plausible deniability. Well, hey, I didn't pay for this so-and-so bankroll that I was just part of the system. And all of a sudden, boom, she's got it out. But then if she gets this guy to open up to her and tell her some things, blackmail. Like, oh, what's that? You ate some people? I have this over here. <laughs> Like you, uh, you owe me now. Like, oh, it's two hundred million. Another fifty just got tacked on. You cannibal. <laughs> Wait, you're a when a when a Wendigo? You're a Wendigo? Isn't that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Have you been hanging out with Guy Pierce? 
Have you seen Robert Carlyle? <laughs> I've been hanging out with Kmart Tom Pier uh Guy Pierce. His name huh. is Thomas Dean. Whoa! <laughs> you take that back. The bionic stud muffin? Mm-mm. Oh, man. He, you know what? I shouldn't say that. He's from Maryland, so I should be giving props to Thomas Jane. TJ's the best. And so is T.O., Timothy Oliphant. And so is mm. T.C., Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. I can't think of more. I would have would have T.H., Tom Hanks. Oh, there it is. Wow. So I even the big of... one. Wow. Nailed it. T-Rex. No. T.N., Tandy, <laughs> Tandy Newton. <laughs> T-Rex. <laughs> it's a great band. <laughs> Tracks. So on the plane, yeah, we've got Dr. Susan McAllister is undercutting Russell Franklin. But also, he doesn't, she's explaining the, where they're going and what it is and where they bought it from. He's put $200 million in this and he doesn't, he doesn't know these things. Like how, how rich, I don't know, we've established he's the richest man in the world, but how rich is he to spend $200 million and just not even really know what he's spending it on or where it well, is? Pharmaceutical companies got bank. I'd say billions, right? gotta be but even still if you have billions 200 million is still a, a hefty fraction i think he's doing the same thing that she's doing to him if he's gonna have this doctor that he's just shelling out millions for to make sure this is going right he's gonna know what it is where it is she's like i guess it's on your dime he's like i don't know there's no way he's not looking over these records and and giving a thumbs up on these decisions there's no are way are they negging that. each other yes is this like a They're each other situation up. a cns <laughs> I, I, it's gotta be. Let's, I, I mean, make, he would know. You're right. Even if it's billions of dollars, they would know about 200 million. He knows what's yeah. going on. He's eating people. He knows what's up. Yeah. Metaphorically and literally. So is that looks like Alcaraz floats lying prepared that he's, as he's seen pictures that, ah, oh, okay, had this in my back pocket. Looks like Alcaraz floats. That's his. Yeah. One is he that good of an improviser where he knows like, oh, Alcaraz, he probably saw the picture and on the whole plan ride, he's like, all right, what do we got? I can say. Stop. Wait for it to stop um, talking. Not San Quentin. No, no one's going to know San Quentin. What if I say Alcatraz? Boom. No. Oh, I love it. Alcatraz floats. <laughs> he picks the one that's already an island. You know what? If, if he, <laughs> if he is a cannibal, he's knowing the story. What do you mean if? He so he's a cannibal. He knows this storm is coming, and when they lock the gate behind him later, he's like, "These lock." They're like, yeah. He's like, you guys don't have many people here. No. What if he is planning on eating everybody there? He's in league with the sharks. No, he's a, then, he, he's just a wen, uh, he's like a Wendigo. He, he's just gonna go eat. Well, think of it like this: he eats a good majority of them, right? We got a chef on there. He's gonna cook them up rice, a little jus, a little sauce, some good sides to go with it. He can claim as an insurance issue, like, look, something went wild. There's no way this is an act of God. And then the insurance company is going to shell out all kinds of money. They get all of the gear out of there. They sell it off pennies on the dollar. And then they turn around, flip the property for profit, and they come out with more money than they did in the beginning. Boom. Wow. And he's full. Well, and he's full. Full, full yeah. bellies. Even better. Satisfied. What? <laughs> so the sharks are saviors again. Like the sharks. Still, yeah. Like, I, I guarantee you the deaths that these people have by shark are quicker than cannibalism death. <laughs> well, well, Stellan's death was uh, a little prolonged. Yeah, but everybody was. else. I mean, there's, there's no death in here that I'd like to experience. <laughs> no no oh, one goes out sure. clean. Like, the, uh, the explosion is probably, like, the one that takes out the helicopter pilots. That's probably the, the kind of the, the quickest. Uh, yeah. For, so. This could have become a delicatessen-type film. <laughs> it's like a snow piercer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I, or, or in the words of uh, Susan McAllister, I don't know. Who knows? You know, it's one of those things. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. So Aquatica, it was built in World War II. The Navy built it in World War II for submarine loading and refueling. And after the war, it was picked up by Chimera, essentially. And they added aquatic pens, underwater labs, all on Russell Franklin's dime. Is what we find out here in this delightful exposition on the plane. I can see why they mothballed it, because in World War II, right out there, so this is right off like the coast of Baja, so you're on the Pacific, and out, you know, out then you had the ports that were really important in, in uh, Pearl Harbor, so then you probably needed a, a station there. But I think as these ships got more sophisticated and there were less wars, it makes sense that they would mothball Aquatica. Especially, what's the sense of having submarine when you got two really big ideas that's really going to blow some people away? Like, I'm sure somebody was like, hey, uh, we got this little Manhattan project, and they were like, what? Hey, fellas, shut it down yep. and bring the popcorn. 
<laughs> Shut it down. We're making super smart sharks instead. <laughs> that they shoot by trebuchets. <laughs> Uh, and the plane they're flying in is the same plane used in Six Days and Seven Nights with Harrison Ford and Anne Hesch. Mm. So it's the same plane. They repainted it and didn't crash it this time. I got I love the trivia in Rennie Harlan movies, and I, I like his breakdown of how the th- the plane was on a crane and they had green screen and how they filmed it and how they had to move it around on a gimbal. I, I dug it. I love Rennie Harlan commentaries. If you've never listened to, to one of his, they're the best, so I highly recommend it if you guys haven't done it's, it. It's a working plane, so Sapphire Boris is... She's turning on. She's like operating the propellers and stuff. Yeah. She's just not not flying it because shot on the ground. And they have their headsets on. In some movies, when they don't have headsets, it's annoying. Yes, because you could be shouting and screaming at each other to hear anything. <laughs> what? I can't. Uh, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> you ate people. <laughs> the tiger shot. He what? So I'm on this really loud plane with Russell Franklin, and I swear to you, he told me he ate some people. I'm not sure because it was loud, but I think it. I tried to record it, but all you can hear is just this. <laughs> 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 oh. But I'm telling you, Alcatraz floats. They get to the prison. This is, and then from here on out, it becomes a prison break film. Oh, did you notice the frostbite damage on on Russell Franklin's ears, Sam Jackson's ears? I didn't. I was looking out. I was looking out for it. But when we get closer to the ears, he's got the, uh, the the big headphones on in the plane. Yeah. So I was going to keep an eye out for later. But yeah, apparently it's it's there. Yeah. So when you look later on, you do see frostbite damage on his ears. Hmm. And he he says that during this section of the commentary during this clip. So I didn't know if y'all noticed that or not, but I thought it was pretty neat. We'll keep we'll keep an ear out for it in the future. <laughs> so they get there. I, I like I just like the how quick it is. So right now we are what six seven minutes into this film, and we've already had a shark attack. We've had the super tom taking the shark out. We've had a helicopter lady walking like a boss. A good story, and then we've also had a plane ride back where we find out about where we might assume that Sam Jackson's a cannibal. So I mean, this is seven minutes, and there's a lot going. And we learned that a Finnish driver's won the F1 racing. They pack in a lot into this first part of this film, and I dig it. it you're you're ready to go. We've reached a location where the rest of the film is going to be. Everything after this is on this base. It's like, what go? That's, that's it. That's, that's, we're here. It's a smart move. And they never cut away to anything either. Like, they are on that base. There's no, like, elsewhere. There's a team track in a storm, or they're trying to get somebody out there. It's like, nope, we're here the whole time. Doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. They, they, they use a, a good function of having two groups in the base. So it's mainly like preacher and the bird one area and the rest of the group in another. So they can cut back and forth there. That's always good. And then even when even when the groups converge, they then split up again almost immediately. So they, they are always able to cut apart. We will we'll talk about that in the coming months, I'm sure. Did you not hear about the deleted scenes with Paul Giamatti? He's a weather guy on the radio and he's guiding them through the facility. That's, that, that's San Andreas, right? I want this yeah. to be true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he yeah, because I loved his cameos in the 90s, so I could totally see him popping up. And this is a San Andreas-type role, exactly. Yeah, the, the same role as in the Truman Show, where he's just... Yeah. He's, he, he's told the, the sharks contact him, that he's asked them, he's supposed to let them out, and he's like, no, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to do it. Well, I, it. we got three sharks out there with them, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's just a uh, storm coming, so, you know, we just got to get them out of there. And then you have Chris Pine and, uh, oh man, Chris Pine and the guy from, uh, oh, Ben Foster. They're in the Coast Guard trying to get out there, but the storm's too big. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. It's like a we fun- didn't quite see their finest hours in this film. So they're, they're trying to get out there. You got Paul Giamatti. I mean, the working cut of this movie was three hours long. And I'm really glad they got rid of it. And it doesn't feel like a three hour movie hacked down to <laughs> the length of this. Cause sometimes when movies are hacked down from three hours, they feel disjointed. But I didn't even miss, I didn't even miss Ben Foster, Nick. So you're no. saying release the Harlan cut is what you're saying. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't want the Harlan cut. I don't, I don't want the Paul W.S. Anderson event horizon cut. I don't want to see more of hell. It works just fine. I don't, I don't need, I don't need them use, they're, they're coming out from a boat in California. They have Massachusetts accents. I don't want it. I don't want that solely in my deep blue sea. I'll take Paul he Giamatti. Wants the truth. Yeah. I'll take the half director's cut. <laughs> The Giamatti cut. cut. <laughs> yes, I want the Giamatti cut of Deep Blue Sea now. <laughs> he finds well. out he's not in the film. He's not getting any residuals. <laughs> well, there goes my trip to Disney World. 
I went to the premiere and everything. How embarrassing. Brought my girlfriend and my mother and... Now, to be fair, two years later, Driven 